Action activate. So I got this queued up. All right. Welcome, you too. We are on episode <laughs> eleven of Power Rangers Beast Morphers. That's I right. I am the Big Dog Defender. That is yes, but and let's jump into it. Okay, episode eleven. Uh, real quick, I think we missed a little bit of chat. Uh, we about... did. Okay, this um... is this is going back to the dentist from last episode. Chelsea Mills. Uh, this is from Matt Kendall Claire. Uh, Chelsea Mills Millar, the one who plays the dentist, was actually the voice of Fiera, the Nylock that introduced Laura into us, and she also did the voice mm. of Clitch, the Catholic monster from Ninja Steel Christmas. Up. Okay, so a, a alum for sure. Steel is funny. Okay, nice. Uh, Aki Dragu wants to know what we think about the data chip plotline. I like it a lot, and I, I hope too. it turns into something awesome. I agree. Um, I like that. They started episode 10. It continues down episode 11. Presumably it goes to episode 12. I love that it's a mini arc, at least three, maybe more. But I love when they do that, you know, because mm -hmm. there's always the big character, the big arc of the whole season. And hopefully that plays in a little bit and it's not too episodic, but putting these yep. little mini arcs, it's like, you know, when they had the candle for uh, green with evil and, you know, mm -hmm. going all the way back, it's always nice to have those. I, I got a little bit of a spoiler and maybe it's the one you got before uh, a Probably toy. It's a toy spoiler. If you, and, and I wasn't even looking into it, but some Instagram I follow was like, and they literally said, here's a spoiler toy. And I was like, Oh, for that, 2020. I didn't for next read it, season. but I saw it. Same. So be careful if you're looking at toys, it was stuff about next season that they already have a figure picture up. So yeah. Um, also what I will say in this, this isn't really a spoiler, which is why I'm going to say it. Okay. So they showed twelve, the twelve inch what we call shampoo bottle figures. Um, there was a spoiler of somebody. That's, that's the that one we're I'm not talking sure. about. We just know what it looks like, and it was of uh, the three main rangers, and it said uh, Beast X, and then whatever color they are. Usually, we talk about there being American like only versions of stuff. Mm -hmm. This to me seems like that route that they're doing, and it might be based on their animals, but not too sure yet. I. I agree. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So we start off now. This is episode 11, which I watched mm -hmm. out of order. Um, <laughs> and it's, again, starting kind of with a training thing. But this yep. time, everybody's blindfolded, and Devin is training them, and he wants them to focus on their animal instincts and their animal powers, which is funny considering that's exactly what the villains are focused on. I know. So it's like, let's strengthen the powers that they want to now steal. So I – I wonder if it's like a thing where if they weren't strengthening their powers, like I w it almost makes you think like if the villain stole the power and then they strengthened their own power, then they could defeat them. You know what I mean? But they're kind of, well, they don't know what the villains are doing. We do. True. Uh, let's see. Akidragu says, don't worry about that spoiler for this season. Well, I'm not worried about it, but it's a bummer that it's out there. Yeah. All right. So they're fighting and you know, it's all about heart of the cards, eye of the tiger and <laughs> it, it gets interrupted because Ben and Betty, and this is also weird. I guess it got delivered to Grid Battle Force, but they're like, oh, we have your package, Devin, that we are going to deliver to you in the gym, which, again, they I have think every job. I'm just dub. super stoked to get it to them because they like them as friends and they know how much Devin loves video games. True. That they previously established, but then everything that follows I don't like. Yeah, and, and, and he does say it's a, a VR headset, and he does say that he's been saving for months, which, again, good character development shows that he plans ahead, show, you know, good for the kids, you know, values, oh, you want something, you got to save up for it, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he did that job for a day and then realized he couldn't do it and be a ranger, so he quit and somehow has money now. He might save up the way I did when I didn't have a job as a kid. I would save up if I got a check for my birthday or if I got a dollar for getting mm -hmm. an AMI report card, I would still be saving up. I wasn't necessarily working, or maybe I'd mow a lawn and get four bucks you know yeah. and so there is ways to save up even if you don't have a steady job all right fair ha! you can have the point Ninja Steel. there okay. we go <laughs> <laughs> so they get a call from the chief hey we got to get going he's like oh take care of my headset be very very careful with it please and, and i knew something dumb was gonna of happen. course I hated it. Uh, but i do like that betty's like i'm gonna put it on and ben as you can tell by his face here is like no what are you doing because yeah. i think he's also the one that made the promise he's like i'll take care of it and then betty's like i'm gonna get you in trouble one uh, quick note from yes. the screenshot. You do notice that they are wearing green and pink shirts. 
I did not notice that. Interesting. I just did. Okay. I know that they changed the colors of shirts later. They do. I remember that as well. <laughs> uh, so now we get a shot, which is interesting. It's her putting on the VR, but this is similar to shots we see sometimes when the Rangers are in their helmets, you mm-hmm. know, where it's just like a light on their eyes. Aki Drago says, also, don't they get money from Grid Battle Force? They're technically employees. I don't know. Um, I don't think they do. Ben and Betty. That's why he had to do yeah. that dumb job that he didn't want to do. Yeah, Ben and Betty almost certainly do because they're actual, like, employees. But mm-hmm. the Rangers probably don't. Um, yeah. It's funny because I've been watching Dino Thunder and I'm about halfway through right now and I just watched an episode where they were specifically talking about how Power Rangers don't get paid anything. And yep. so it's it's funny that they this comes up here. I've noticed not that they're the same but there's a lot of similarities between that season and this season even with the starting with the three core Rangers bit, and yeah. things like that. Um, but so she puts this on and then we see I hate when they do fake bad vr and they've been doing it since like the 80s and you would think they'd get better but she puts it on and basically is watching a perfect video of like like as though a surfer had like a gopro yeah Uh, okay i guess now i've worn an oculus rift i don't own one it's not like this it's very immersive and cool but it's not like this and then she starts stepping on tables and going whoa she has a headset and gloves if anything she could be losing her balance there's nothing in the game that would make her do this yeah, this is dumb. We don't understand VR. We need physical comedy. Yes. Yada, yada, yada. She goes through, as you could have guessed, something bad happens, and she falls. Yep. Ter- what happens when she falls? Of course, something she breaks damages it. the VR headset. The oh, terrible no. CGI shark makes her fall. It is a good pratfall, I will say that. But the other thing is, I didn't like the CGI shark, and I don't like the CGI smoke when she falls. They wanted yeah. to show that it's damaged, cracked open, and they CGI'd smoke in there. And it was like really noticeably odd. It was weird. It's dumb. But... Forget about that. We cut back to the action. At, yep. or, or actually, we cut to the action because we're coming in in the middle of a fight, which I also mm-hmm. like. Very Indiana Jones. I love Jones. when they do that, too. Yeah, yeah. just like because there's always stuff going on. We don't see it every second. Um, mm-hmm. Akidragu. Oh, no, that was a battle force. Okay. So Steel and Nate are fighting Blaze. And yep. they're not too worried because he's not as tough as Roxy. So they're like, okay, this isn't that big a deal. And uh, Blaze is like, I'm going to get you, Rangers. And then the rest of them show up. And he's like, yep. uh, maybe not. And they all put out their guns, which, again, I like. He, pull, he calls out the Tronics. They have a fight. It's a decent fight. Not the best. Not the worst, I think. Yeah, it just kind of is. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, and then, again, the guns work in magic. Every time they, they decide to use it, they're just like one-shotting people. So Blaze is using this distraction to, to create his tr- – uh, not his Tronic. His um, Gigatronic? I, I keep forgetting. What do you call the monster of the week? Drone. N- Gigadrone? Gigadrone? Gigadrone's the big one, so. I thought. Oh, then a Giga uh- – he makes the monster. He makes the monster of the week, although he doesn't get to. He starts to, oh, I love and this. Devin this is, flies oh, in with I speed. And, I, me too. I loved it because it was proactive. It's, again, disrupting the status quo. Just like last episode when the Megazord gets shot from underneath, it's like, right. oh, he's going to make the monster. No, you're not making the monster. There's so many dis- dashed expectations in a good way in this season. I like it. And I also like, like last season they had um, – Ravi uses strength. We're having yeah. Devin uses super speed. A lot of seasons. And the... he doesn't get to capture it. Right. Yes. He doesn't that's get his to... whole mission is yes. to get it. And that's why he fails. Let Robotron. Thank you very much, Matt Kendall, Claire, and Akidragu. Um, yeah. So I, I like everything about this. And I like that they're using their powers more. And now, obviously, it's part of the plot line because they want to steal them. But yeah. so many times, like again, watching Dino Thunder, they all have special powers. They never use them. Never. I mean, they might again later in the season, but like they all get like, oh, I could turn invisible. Did that once in 20 episodes. I have yep. armor. Did that once in 20 episodes. I like that they establish they have special powers and they're using them. I dig yeah. it. It's not every single episode all the time, but they pull them out when they need it. And this was a clutch use and it was awesome. Exactly. Uh, and so he's crying over his pieces and, and that was great. So then they use their blasters and one shot every Tronic that's left. <laughs> again, blasters win the day. Um... Let me cut back to Grid Battle Force. And let me check. Uh, what is going on here? I don't even remember. Do you? They're uh, talking about things. I'll check my notes real quick. Oh, I think they're... <sighs> oh, I know. Nate is working on detectors. Uh, oh, that's right. And... Detectors around the city, so that way they know when Giga Drones are coming. But he's also... Like, that's the main thing he's saying. But as a throwaway, he said, uh, I'm working on a new Megazord combo. Oh, yeah. Which I like that they put that in. I know you're going to later be like, oh, they didn't set this up enough, but he did at least throw that in that he's no, working No, no, no. What I actually was going to say is the opposite is when he said that, I was kind of bummed because oh. I thought it was going to happen this episode. And I was so glad when it didn't, which made me like the line more. Okay, good. 
Yeah. I did not expect you to like something. Spoiler alert. We don't get the <laughs> five Megazord combo today. <laughs> um, so, oh, sorry. Let me advance the slide. So they come in, uh, Ben and Betty come in, and they have the broken helmet, and they're talking to Zoe. They're like, oh, we got to talk to Devin. It's terrible. We feel so bad. We broke it. I don't know what we're going to do. Yep. And she's like, I will take the fall. He won't be as mad at me. Don't worry about it. And they're like, really? Is that a good idea? And they've both got bandages on their heads and stuff. And it's kind of a weird thing that, like, like Zoe's being nice, but it's like, wouldn't he be mad at her, too? I guess she's so like. So here's yeah. what I took from it. Yeah. And this adds to what I said earlier in the previous episode, talking about episode 10. Yeah. Devin and Ravi are so, like, <laughs> hard-headed and mean at times. Right. That Zoe recognizes this and goes, all right, he is going to freak out but would he freak out at her as well but here's the thing she knows how to handle them clearly the two of them don't know how to handle them right as we see later on which is why she's like even if it's bad i got it because i'll talk to him they're just gonna freak out at you guys your feelings are gonna be hurt who knows what else is gonna happen it's gonna be bad news bears i think i think you're right but it's still it just seems weird. Which makes me like Devin less. Yeah. Because he's hey. so knee-jerky of like, oh my gosh. To be fair, though, I, actually, I wouldn't have even given them the headset. I would have no. put it somewhere. Yeah, that was a mistake. But I guess he got called away on a mission, and he's like, I, I got to give I still would have put yeah. it somewhere. Well, if he's that guy, then he should have been like, why are you bringing this to me? Here, leave it in my locker. Leave it at wherever, you know. Yeah, uh, please, yeah. like, put it back. No, nah, yeah. I don't know. I got nothing, but the whole thing was awkward. The whole thing that they brought it to him, terrible. it was yeah. is, is awkward. Um, is her shirt purple before it was pink and now it's purple, or is it just different lighting? Doesn't matter. I don't know. Ignore the question. Uh, we're moving on to the cyber evil dimension of cyber evil, and we see. Oh, that's a weird screen where I, I paused it by mistake. So Blaze is talking to Evox, and Roxy's getting jealous, and they're being pitted against each other. But then Roxy mm -hmm. talks to Scrawls. I love. The little Roxy Scrozzle moments, because it definitely seems like she understands it's a good idea to be friends with him and kind of, mm -hmm. oh, hey, Scrozzy baby. And like, again, being smarter than Blaze, who's just like, Ugh, I'm Blaze. She's Some like, fourth guy, yeah. yeah, she's playing Survivor. He's just trying to survive. Um, and so she's he, she sees him putting it together, the, uh, the destroyed unit that makes the Robotrons. Oops, I don't know why that's there. And uh, says, oh, can you get something that will take things apart? And it's a little bit simplistic, like it's this computer that goes, broop, all the pieces go together. Makes no sense. It's super science. It's evil science, whatever. But yep. she's like, can you reverse it to make things come apart? Good question. And he says, yes. So that sets yep. up where we're going to go with this. Uh, then we go back to Grid Battle Force, and Nate has completed the detector. And he's like, we're going to place these around the city. Um, but once we put it there, you have to kind of activate it, each one. Mm -hmm. So each ranger is going to take one. Ben and Betty, you can take one as a team. Also help now have new shirts that are awesome, reminiscent of Bulk and Skull. Love it. Keep going. Yes. Yes, purple and orange, reminiscent of Bulk and Skull and the ranger colors they got. Also, the fact that he's like, each ranger will take one, and they together count as a ranger in this. Yep. I mean, it's not super explicit, but it, once again, reinforcing that, like, maybe something will happen. Who knows? Now, so. now the only thing I will say, and I don't want to get too spoilery, but I know a little bit about go busters not that i've seen it but from toys and things like that mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure there is not a orange or purple go busters suit correct so if they somehow get rangered up they're not going to be orange or purple but it still could be a hint that it's coming or it might not be but yeah. you know it's definitely something we notice every time okay so here's Devin. he's setting his up he does a good job there's ben and betty they're setting theirs up they seem to be doing a good job but roxy sees them grabs a wrench which I also like the symbolism of I'm going to throw a wrench in the works. She doesn't say that, but that's how I took it. Yeah. Uh, great face acting here. It's like, <laughs> uh, and then she creates him. He is not as good as Drillatron, but he's cool looking. Yeah. I feel like they're, they could be brothers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, you know what occurs to me? I, I kept saying that Drillatron existed in this episode, but he didn't. He got destroyed last episode mm -hmm. because I was thinking this was still Drillatron, but it's yeah. it's just a permutation of another. Yeah. yeah, so that is more interesting that he got a figure then. But the same thing where she puts the little uh, deconstructor, uh, the power absorber on him. Mm -hmm. This I like. He tests out his deconstruction beam on a Morphex bike that was parked there. Continuity. Somebody in the city is using a Morphex bike. I didn't notice that, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, and so then she, oh, then she puts the little thing to absorb the power. He shoots and he shoots at Roxy to get her communicator slash morpher 
misses – Not Roxy, Zoe. I'm sorry, Zoe, yes. Misses and gets the um, detector because she had come to check on those guys and saw that it was mm-hmm. done. Oh, it hits like a mirror or something and bounces. Is that what happens? Yeah, because it's above them. It thought... hits the back window and reflects I... oh, off. Oh, because she sort of ducked it. down. Yeah, but so yeah. But basically they don't see it get disassembled, and mm-hmm. his plan failed, but they did mess up the detection and cause more problems down the road, which we're about to find out about. Yeah. Because um, they get back to base. And look, there's the other uh, – it occurs to me, the beast bots – other mm-hmm. than Steel gets to be, like, one of the team all the time because he's a ranger, I guess. And I guess because he's half human. But it yeah. also puts a highlight on how St- uh, Cruz and the other ones are sort of just always hanging back, not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quick in chat. Let's see. Uh, Matt Kendall Claire, I like how Roxy calls him Scrazi. I do, too. And then Akidragu, I think the juice bar in the gym scene, the actor portrays as if he was excited about the VR more than Ben and Betty bringing it to him. No, I, you're right. I agree. He's excited about the VR. Turd. <laughs> but I feel like he, the, he, they shouldn't have brought it to him, and he shouldn't have trusted them with it. That's. I think they were doing something nice, and he is slowly but surely becoming bottom of the list of people I like in the show. Sad. Okay. Uh, so they're all, he's saying, oh, that's weird. One of the detectors is not online. Ben and yep. Betty come in with Zoe. They've all got ice cream because they think they did a good job. And they're like, what do you mean? And he's all like, oh, look at that face. That's... Immediately. <laughs> Doesn't even ask. Does not oh, even ask. You're, you're having ice cream to celebrate your failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just the worst. But now here, but Zoe does not do a good job here because she's like, no, I saw it set up. It wasn't their fault. But she kind of establishes herself as a liar here because yeah. he kind of and Jax is like, well, I know Zoe, but still. And they go and fix it, but she, th- he doesn't believe her. He's like, well, how you guys? It makes more sense that you broke it than her, and now he doesn't trust her. So. It is a, definitely a moral of like, hey, tell the truth, because she's telling yeah. lies for a good cause, but ends up hurting them and herself. So now Devin's yeah. mad at them and her, and it's a big mess. So they go the and set up, thing. yeah, they go up and set up the new one, but they get interrupted. So it's Morphin time with everybody except for Zoe. Mm-hmm. And oh, I, I put this in, but we don't need to see that because I saw I saved these because again I watched them out of order, so I thought it was the first time, but the first yeah. time was last episode. So we can skip all that. Now look, they pull out their guns. Awesome, they're gonna one shot them. But nope, because he has the disassemble beam. Smart taking out the guns because he knows they will one-shot him. Yep. Uh, and then they go to call more. He disassembles the communicator summoning device. Smart. I like that. That makes perfect sense. They see some throwaway line about it, which I didn't like. I don't remember what it was. What do you mean? It, w- it was something like, oh, it takes all the fun time out of it or something like that. Who says that? Uh, I want to say it was Robbie. Somebody says something about the like teleporter device going offline and I didn't like it and he moved past it. I thought it was something like we got to do this the hard way or old school or something like that. I don't remember. Uh, Whatever it was, I didn't like it. It bothered you more than me because I don't remember it that much. Um, Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm I'm way behind on my notes here. Um, So basically though, he points his deconstruction beam at Steel. And this was the first thing I thought was like Steel's, I mean, he talks about he's half robot, I mean half human, but he's a robot and he could be disassembled. Can he be disassembled in in morphed form? I don't know. Um, But he points it at him and I felt drama. I was like, this, this could be a problem. And then what happens? He fires... Ravi to the rescue, picks up a hubcap, Steel here, Steel picks it up, boom, deflects it. This is the deflection I think that you were thinking of before. Hits the detector and deconstructs that instead. That was a cool moment. It for both. I think the first one she just ducked down to close the, and it and it shot over her head. Maybe, I don't know. But Ravi's quick thinking. He realizes, oh, Steel's a robot, he's in trouble, I'm going to save him. You didn't like that? That didn't raise Ravi up a few points? I thought it was fine. I think the thing that bothered me more that I focused on was they did the dramatic – because I watched this on demand, so I had to watch it with commercials, which made it more difficult. But it's like, hey, Steel's a robot, and he's just like, oh, what if I get hit right now? Mm. And he's just like standing there, and I'm like, come on, man. Because it was going to a commercial break, you're saying. Yeah, so it was building the drama of it, but like he was holding there for a long time like, oh, what happens if if I get hit because I'm a robot? Like – yeah, but it was it was just simple and that I, part. I could see it also that Steel is so um he has such an ego and he's so ha 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 that he's just like oh you're fire like he's not even thinking I could be destroyed he's just like invincible in his mind. Oh. Uh, Matt Kendall Claire liking my Jack's impression thanks. Uh so while they're but oh but they're all talking about it like they all like oh it's broken and I'm like why don't the bad guys fire and they do which I loved because yep. it's like oh you're gonna talk about that we're gonna shoot at you 
Uh, and then he comes in with his cheetah speed. Uh, Ravi uses his gorilla strength. Everybody's using their powers. Great. They get a call from Jax. Uh, they're trying to call her. Her communicator has been destroyed. How? Oh, look, she's fighting the Disassemblatron, which is not his name, I know. But I love that, again, she used her jackrabbit jump when unmorphed. It's like, oh, that makes perfect sense to get away. Now, unfortunately, yep. that means he was able to capture the power, but she doesn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and then Cruz shows up with new morphers for them and new communicators for them, which is a little bit convenient, but they've established that they have multiples of everything yep. and Cruz is fast and, and it's using assets. Again, if they were just like the Power Rangers, like Zordon, it's like, where is this coming from? But it's a it's like, Nope, you're done. Yeah, Fairland. right. But it's a paramilitary group with a support staff communications. All wow. makes perfect sense to me. I dig it. Uh, then they pull out their guns, start shooting one shot, half of them, and then have to fight the rest <laughs> that they didn't one shot, I guess. Yep. Uh, so then we have a melee fight. Uh, these guys get their guns ready. I'm, I'm going a little quick because we're running out of time here. Basically, the guns win the day, as what I've said before. And In they, both episodes. Yeah, and, and even the the main villain of the week, they blow him up just by with double shots. Yeah. But Scrozzle shows up and gets the beast. So they have two now. They were they were they didn't get Red Cheetah, but they got the yellow Zoe's jump power. Mm -hmm. And then we head back. That's a great face of Roxy. We're like. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, Matt Kendall Claire says, I think Defender probably didn't like Ravi's line of, this will be tougher than we thought. At least that's probably the line it was referring to. I think you're yeah, right. I think that likely. is it. Uh, the Robotron's name is Tooltron. Thank you. That's very generic. They could yeah. call him Wrenchtron or something like related to the tool he is. Disassembler Tron. Something, yeah. So she's all sneering and not thrilled, but they send a Gigatron anyway. Uh, and then we see the detector actually detect and work. Oh, and there is the woman who is married that we got the trivia from before. Yep. Uh, and they deploy all the Zords, and we get... Is this the first time we've seen... This is the... the man, they're calling it the Mantis Zor, right? Uh, Zor. Like but, that, yes. It yes, is. okay. And so I thought at first this was the combo Nate was referring no, to. No, I actually way like that better. Um, no, I think that's very cool, uh, but they didn't actually do a further combo. Um, they come in... I thought this was cool. When they were talking in the cockpit, this little line in between, it was like energy fluctuations. I've never seen it before. It was unnecessary, but it was just kind of cool showing, like, the pulsing energy instead of just a straight line. Yeah. I, I don't know. Just something different I liked. Yeah. Uh, another great angle of them fighting. It, it, like... The angles, the angles, man, they're great. Yep. <laughs> uh, like you were talking before about different creative teams in these two episodes. Whoever they're doing it, they must have a, like one cinematographer for the Zords. Or well, I guess it's, oh, because it's all from the Japanese footage. That's why. Yeah. So regardless who's doing the American episode, whoever was doing the Japanese footage of the Zords, excellent job. Um, Wrecker Zord is the, is the name. Thank you, Akidragu. And Real Babu said Deconstructor would have been a cool name. I agree with that as well um matt kendall claire darren young was the voice of tooltron he was roger Hanna, the motocross guy who wanted to recruit hunter and blake in ninja storm oh, nice. oh that is cool return of thunder part of he also did the voice of grinder jungle furious fan of beast warriors uh he was also the voice of force fear and ninja steel who's the final monster under gallop for the next so i, I love when they keep bringing people back and reusing yeah. them and and hopefully i like when they get used throughout especially with monsters and secondary characters and voice actors but i also like that they're more and more starting to bring older actors back and i want them to keep doing that make it be a legacy show people like that the kids may or may not know the character but the older fans do and as again as a kid i would watch shows where they'd bring back some older character that i might not know who they were but it would still be cool and it might encourage me to go back and watch the older ones yeah. um, i think they could bring back just about any monster even from like rita zed era anybody but babu i think would the only one that wouldn't work yeah i don't know if babu would work so maybe some... squat squat without babu that would be good yeah, maybe Squat got away, but Babu is stuck in whatever dumpster they're still in. Like, we, that's, that's what I would say. We, we, we can think about it later, Yeah, though. we can figure it out later. Um, <laughs> we, of course, are being facetious because the real Babu yeah. is here in chat and would love to go back. And we, of course, would love to see him. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the battle's raging on. Uh, I, I also like that the uh, that Steel's ship, uh, Zord, comes in in ship mode and just sort of like a mm -hmm. strafing attack. Uh, this wrench blaster thing that the Gigatron has, I think is awesome looking. I, it does it, look really it, it cool. It looks like it, it's a wrench, but it, it, it's just a perfect melding of like the thing it's supposed to be, but looking really kick-ass too. And it just, yeah, I love it. Uh, and then this is the combo of Steel and Nate Swords together. So this, are, this is what I thought he was referring to when he said the new Megazord combination. But you think he's referring to the ultimate. I think he's referring to the big one. But either way. Yeah, either way. But this was cool. And I I, I dig it. It's not my favorite. Again, a lot of the Zords, they're, they're good. They're not my favorite. Mm -hmm. They're not the worst. I do like this all-out attack. Just cannons flying everywhere. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're getting over time here. 
Uh, I also like that he's firing, and then the normal Megazord comes in with this flying kick with, like, an energy under it. I don't yeah. remember if we've seen this before. I, I don't not. Okay, I didn't recall it either. And they so they sort of do a blast and the kick, and then both the Megazords turn around, and there's an explosion behind them. And again, this is why I thought this is what Nate was talking about, because he didn't. He said Megazord. He didn't say, like, Ultra Zord or something like that. True. And the Megazord they created with those two is exactly the same size as the other Megazord. So I could be wrong, and of course, we know they'll probably combine at some point. But Yeah, one note as well. Um we miss it during the fight but there was another like uh gigatron that came out which is why they need to do the different oh you're attack. right i th- i didn't get a you're right i didn't get a uh, a screenshot of that but it kind of popped out the back i like that they do that and i don't know how i feel about them just being like how did this happen i don't know let's fight them like yeah no i i agree and I, that was my yeah. bad for missing the screenshot of that but no, it no, did no, make you're sense. good it just from a story perspective of if they if the bad guys need so much more effects how are they able to have their uh giga drones do the, the in, such yeah the inconsistency of morphex and its availability usage power consumption it's it's all just whatever the plot is that all week over the it, place, yeah. yeah all right so devin's now like look i'm sorry you know uh i'm a jerk and i understand why maybe you lied to me and she's like all right well i shouldn't have lied but yeah you're a jerk and it is a weird thing where they basically apologize to each other where she's like i yeah. shouldn't have lied and he's like yeah but i know why you did because i'm a jerk and yep. uh big dog hates me but they, they much. but they fix the vr headset and he puts it on he sees the same terrible cgi shark somebody put a skateboard down right behind him he falls on the skateboard he he takes a big tumble Ben and Betty go for it, and it's and he jumps this crazy jump with a face and catches it, and you can't really see it because of my face is covering it. But Betty is making a face and looking the complete other way, which I thought was kind of funny. But basically, they both fall. Devin's this big klutz, almost breaks it again, falls as bad, if not worse, as they did. They save it, but he has to fall to save it, and they laugh at him. Devin is a jerk in this scene, and so is everyone else, because he almost falls, he almost breaks his headset, they jump and save it. They are more heroic and acrobatic than he is in this moment, yet they still get laughed at. That was not cool. That was not cool. They should have said, hey, thanks, and now I see how I could have broken it, too. Or, you know, just, hey, you saved it. Anything other than, like, them grabbing it, being relieved on his behalf, instead of being like, yeah, you can break it yourself. Yeah. Anyway, that is the end of episode 11. We actually... Did it a little bit over time, but not too bad. Um, yep. I also prefer episode 11, um, but I didn't dislike 10 as much as you did. I would say that was a B. This is a B plus, A minus. Both both good episodes. This though. is definitely at least a B, depending on my mood. Could be a B plus, <laughs> but probably a B, just so the other episodes that I deem better are just that much higher on the scale. Uh, Matt Kendall, Claire... Uh... Oh, wait, I missed a few. B- point for Gas and Big Dog, both from Real Babu for trolling yeah, just him. Just steal... Uh, Matt kind of clear the Giga drones are always cool. Um, I usually agree with that. That's true. Yeah. Um, uh, I would like a large Giga drone with like interchangeable hands. I think we've talked about this before. I doubt we'll get it, but it'd be cool. Or even uh, a small one. I'll take a small one. I'll take a small one. But if I if they had a big Giga drone, I probably am not getting the Megazord from this series. But that would inspire me to get it, or maybe the Striker sure. one, just because it looks so cool. Um, yeah. Uh, Matt kind of clear the Striker Megazord did seem kind of cool. Agreed. Uh. And Matt Kinoclair, indeed, the new Delta model Giga Drone, if I remember right. And then Aki Drago, I like both of them. I, ke- I Both, I keep it at a B. Fair. Fair. That's kind of the average. Um, so the art I'm creating up here was the Lost Galaxy. Actually, I could show you the final because it's not quite done. This was the final one. This is my first Lost Galaxy image of pink. Uh, and next week, I will have Psycho Blue, which was one that was actually voted on. <laughs> but I have a new vote coming up. The next one I do is going to be one of these four. And I posted this a few places last night, so some votes have already been coming in. Um, Don't vote now live on Twitch. You could say who you want, but it won't count. It counts on YouTube. It counts on either Action Activate Face Group, which actually I'll put these links up now. Mm -hmm. It counts on my Gazbot Facebook page. It counts on Instagram. Uh, Anywhere you see it, you put the vote in, it'll count. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to allow multiple votes. Wow. Not, Not multiple votes on the same post, but if you vote on Instagram and you vote on Facebook... You could have up to, what is it, one, two, three, I think six. Yeah. So if you want to engage on all those different platforms, I will count them. If you care that much that you want your person to win, I will count them. And I'm going to let it run until next week, and that's when I'll decide the winner. Uh, well, not decide the winner, but count it, and that's when it'll be closed. Yeah. Now, here's something interesting. We've only been going for about a day, but it's in Space Silver, um, Shadow Ranger, Lost Galaxy Green, uh, and Mystic Force Red. I would have bet money that in Space Silver was going to be the runaway hit. Right now, the two leaders, Mystic Force Red and Shadow Ranger. 
they have the most votes by far, and I haven't counted yep. to see which one's winning, but that really surprised me. I, I didn't think Mystic Force was that popular, um, and I thought In Space was just going to win it, you know? So I'm very excited to see who's going to win and how that's going to go. So feel free to vote on any of those platforms multiple times if you want. But yep. for now, we've got to get going. We'll be back next week with the next episode, which should be 12, assuming it airs. If not, we'll be talking about something else. Yep. Uh, Psycho Blue is now out at GameStop. If you had a pre-order, go pick it up. If not, just hope you get lucky. We'll rant about that next week. We'll rant about that next week, but it is there. And uh, I guess that's it for now. I am Gazbot. I am the Big Dog Defender. This has been Action Activate and... To the, to power. the power. Thanks, guys. See you guys later. See you later.